Alright everyone, uh, welcome to the 16th episode of the Java game development series with LibGDX and everything. Um, let's continue the game. So right now we got this. Which is just a ball falling on the ground. And I forgot to mention in the, la um, in the later episodes that if we're using um, a camera, uh, the position 0, 0 is not... Oops is not down here in the bottom left corner anymore but it's in the, in the center of the screen this is now zero zero but I guess that makes sense and you already got that yourself um, anyway today we'll add a box that falls down from here and collides with the ball a little bit so we got some stuff going on and eventually we'll make one of these objects um, be movable so we can move them around with the keyboard um, yeah so let's go ahead and create the second um get yeah, the box. At first we want the body def dot type, this one here, not to be a static body anymore. So let's switch that to a dynamic body. And then we want the position to be at, uh, let me be creative, 2.25 and 10. What's that on my screen? Okay. Next we need the shape. And we'll use a new type of shape here, um, used pretty commonly and it's the polygon shape. It just means we have a bunch of vertices again, but we are not cr chaining them together, we are creating a polygon um, using the vertices. So this is the box shape, which equals a new polygon shape. Yep, if we import this. And then box shape dot has this um, useful method, we could say set vertices here with just set and then put all the vertices in by hand but we're using set as box and this just takes the half height and half width okay it's it's a half one like, like with the ratio again but not really uh, with the radius again but not really a radius it's just the half height and half width so let's say this thing is one meter wide so we have to put the half of it here and two meters high so all right then we create the fixture def and I forgot to put the comment here but I think you don't need these anymore um, at first the shape is now the box shape then the friction is now just well actually it's this much the restitution is going to be not much, it's just a box made of wood or something and the let's say uh, friction is density the density, let's say the density is 5 yeah 5 kilograms in a square meter is still pretty light um, then Sorry for that sound, I always forget to turn this thing off. Okay. So now we can create this thing using world dot create body body def dot create fixture fixture def. And um, don't forget to dispose the shape. Um, okay, so this should already give us the box. There it is. Not really this interesting. So let's actually say, um, at first we want to get this this body. Um, let's create a um, variable up here and call this the box, import the body, and then we, yeah, then we just say box equals world.createBody, and then we can call create fixture on the box. 
So this works just as before. With the difference that we have to restart this thing. But yeah, we don't see any difference. There they fall. Now let's set box dot apply. There, there's a bunch of apply methods. Apply usually just means that we, yeah, like the name says, we apply something to this body. So we can apply an angular impulse. Uh, we can apply a force. We can apply a force to the center. We can apply a linear impulse and a torque. So all just physical things that should be self-explanatory the most part but let's say we want to apply we, we, we want to make this thing rotate so let's apply an angular impulse which means the the angle of the body um, th there will be a, applied an impulse to the angle of the body which causes it to yeah move around let's say we I have no idea I think this is in Newtons, so let's say 500. And this doesn't really matter for us, let's just say true. It's um, if the body is sleeping because it was set on some hill and not touched for a while, it enters the sleeping mode. And if we apply this angular impulse, it should be woken up. What did I just do? Okay, so let's see if this works. Yeah, that's a pretty high angular impulse pretty high. What if you just choose 5? Yeah, and there it falls. But we want these to collide with each other, so hopefully this will collide. Nope, it won't. Um, hmm. Let's say guessing a little bit. Yeah, who actually cares, right? We're gonna move the body anyway. Um, okay, let's remove this one. That was just an example. Uh, now we want to be able to move this body around. And for to do this, we go into the input um, listener, input processor, which we call input controller here. And in key down, we want to replace this if with a switch statement. Switch on the key code. Well, actually, like this, and in case it's the keys dot escape, we still want to escape this thing. But in case we pressed um, W, want to move the body up. So actually, let's just set this up first. Keys dot A means we move the body to the left. Dot S means we move the body down and D we move it to the right and we don't need the break here because this is the last statement um, okay so now we have this body up here like we yeah we put it here earlier and now we can do some stuff with it um, we can say apply again, we want to apply, but this time we want to apply not an angular impulse, we want to apply a force. And if we just choose to apply a force, we can choose um, in which direction in the x, in the x direction this force goes, how, um, yeah, how strong this force is on the y direction and on the x direction, um, and the point where we want the force to be applied to. So we could say this should be applied to the top of the box so it's going to fall over but if we say it should be applied exactly to the middle of the box it's probably not going to fall over because we move the the whole thing and I guess you know what I mean like if if there's someone standing and we push away his feet or we push away his head that's a little difference and then again if we want to wake up the body if it's sleeping um, this is the easier to read method of this but there's also the one with a vector 2 again where you have to give it a vector 2 for the force, a vector 2 for the point, and uh, the boolean again. So the vector 2 is pretty much just the same as x and y. This is what this is showing here. 
we can also sp uh, use the apply force to center which just applies the force to the center of the body so we don't have to yeah, find out that ourselves um, let's say we use this one and the force x is going to be mm, let's let's create a variable called speed and everything okay but we actually don't want to put this here at first let's create the speed variable which is going to be 500 yeah um then every time we update um this yeah every time the world steps and we update everything we want to apply this force because applying a force doesn't mean it's flipping away it it means it's um smoothly accelerating up to that force up to the speed that this force causes um we could apply an impulse which would mean we have just have to do it once and it's like kicking that thing away but we want to make it move around smoothly like a player usually would i mean you don't if you start walking you are not just like boom and you are on high speed so let's say box dot apply force to center and then we give it a vector 2 which we're going to call movement or something and we want it to wake up we of course have to create this movement vector private vector 2 movement and in the beginning it's going to be just a new vector 2 at 0 0 and then if we press this this keys here um, this movement vector should be changed um, movement dot actually w means we go up on the y-axis and we are going to give it speed in this case we want to go left so x equals minus speed in this case we want to go to the right so it's pretty much the same but not minus and here movement dot y equals minus speed because we're going down on the y-axis and we have to restart because we created new variables there it is now I press A and we're moving around in that direction so you saw that I cannot stop because <laughs> right now we just set these to these um, variables but if we if we don't um, press this key anymore we don't want to move around anymore so we have to implement wi override one more method in this input controller which is an input uh, processor and everything that which is going to be key up key up is called when a key is released so let's set the pretty much the same thing up for key up we don't care about escape anymore and we don't want to set this to speed we just want to set this to zero also since we just set it to zero and we don't have to differ between speed and minus speed so zero is always not negative or positive it's neutral or something um, we can pack these together and s and d is okay s and d makes no sense we have to put the on the y-axis together w and s oops and in case w or s is pressed we want to set the movement on the y-axis to zero and in case d or a is pressed or a or d we want to set the movement to the left and the right to zero and restart again
let's see if this is working. Uh, it's not working for right. What am I doing wrong? If I press D, oh yeah, what that makes no sense. S is for Y, and D is for X. Um, D should also be speed, and Y should be minus speed right here. Yep, that makes sense. Are these correct? W, S, A, and D. Yep, they are correct. Okay. So now I can move this thing around smoothly. And yeah, it's still influenced by the by the gravity, of course. We can have it uh, rotating if it. Yeah, we we that this is pretty much showing um, with this um, point where the velocity should be applied. Right now we say apply um, velocity to center. Ap not apply apply force to center. So to center means that we apply the force to this point in the middle of the box. So if the box is rotating, it just keeps rotating because we don't touch it, we don't grab it at some other place which could stop the rotating. And let's show that again. There we go. It's rotating and it will keep rotating forever as long as it doesn't touch anything else. Um, okay, how much time did we record? 16 minutes? Well, who cares? Let's actually um, get some, some camera stuff going on. We want the camera to always be at the position that this box is, because we control the box, so we could say it's like the player or something. Um, to do this, we... At first we want to move this rendering below the updating, because it makes some sense. Um, otherwise, we always otherwise we always one frame behind what's actually happening, um, and then we want the camera to position at the right place. Camera dot position dot set, and we have to give it an x and y and actually a z um, value. But z can just be set to zero because this is two D space and we don't care about <laughs> z at all. X is going to be box dot get position dot x which is pretty simple and y box dot get position dot y and then we need to call camera dot update again which recalculates the matrices matri matrices or something um however it is pronounced and these matrices are used by the debug renderer here so play and it's totally not working at all isn't that great? Well, why is that? We set the position and update. Hmm. Oh, I had to save this before <laughs> it's working actually. So, yeah, there we go. Now it looks like the box isn't doing anything at all when the ball is, but yeah, actually the box is moving. So here we see the end of the platform. Now it looks more like the box is moving. Um, and bing. Ah, I love playing around with box to D. Yeah, you can play a around a lot um, in box to D. So there still is a bunch of different things in box to D that we didn't talk about yet. There is the edge shape. There is the I don't know what kind of shapes are there. Well, I think that's pretty much all about the shapes, but um, there's still a whole new topic that is actually pretty interesting, and that is how we can like, put different bodies together. For example, a human has arms and he has a head, but they are not always in the relative position, in the same relative position to each other, so we cannot apply them to one single body. We have to get multiple bodies and then um, tie these things together, the arms and the legs and the body of the human um, using joints actually. Uh, so I guess next episode we'll talk about joints? I'm not sure. Maybe we'll do something else. But just that you know we have this option. Um, you can already play around pretty much with this um, opportunity here that we learned. And yeah, anyway, have a good day and thanks for watching.